We start by defining a circle as a set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a given point called the center of the circle. A circle with center P is called circle P and can be written as a circle with a dot and then the capital P beside it, as you can see in the diagram. Alright, we're going to start um, by describing some different parts of a circle. Um, some of them you'll be familiar with, some of them you might not remember, might not have heard of before. Um, but we'll start with an easy one, um, and that goes from the center of a circle to an edge of a circle. And we call that the radius. Okay. The next one that we'll talk about goes from one side of the circle to the other side of the circle. Okay. And that one we call a chord. Now there's a special type of chord, and that one goes from one edge of the circle to the edge of the other side of the circle, but it goes through the center. And this one you probably heard of and you remember, this one is called the diameter. Okay. So again, the diameter is a special type of chord because it goes through the center. Okay. Um, the next one that we have um, is called the secant, and the secant goes past the circle, or goes through the circle. Okay, so it has these points that are on the circle, but it goes out beyond that. So that one's called the secant. Okay, and then we have one more that we're talking about, and this one touches the circle just once. Okay, and this one's called the tangent line. And it's the tangent because it only touches, again, it touches the circle at one exact point, or exactly one point. And we call that point right here the point of tangency. Okay. So we have the radius, the diameter, which are both things that you should remember. A chord, secant, and a tangent line are typically the new ones that you may or may not know of. And again, a chord goes from one side of the circle to the other side. It starts and stops on the edge of the circle. A secant goes from outside the circle. It cuts all the way through on both sides. And a tangent line only touches the circle at one point, and that point is called the point of tangency. All right, this example says, tell whether the line ray or segment is best described as radius, chord, diameter, secant, or tangent of circle C. So uh, this first one, AC. So from A to C, C is the center of the circle, and A is on the circle. So we would call that the radius, or a radius. All right. Now, segment AB goes from one side of the circle to the other side. So technically it is a chord, but it's a special type of chord, so it's a diameter. And then we got ray DE. Now, ray goes from here to here on the outside, so that's going to be a tangent. And then line AE goes from here all the way across past the sides of the circle, so that's going to be a secant. Okay. All right, um, we're talking about coplanar circles and common tangents. In a plane, two circles can intersect at two points, one point, or no points. Coplanar circles that intersect at one point are called tangent circles. Coplanar circles that have a common center are called concentric circles. Right. And then a line or segment that is tangent to two coplanar circles is called a common tangent, right, like these pictures here in the middle. A common internal tangent intersects the segment that joins the centers of the two circles. And a common external tangent does not intersect the segment that joins the center of the two circles. Alright, now for this example, it says tell how many common tangents the circles have and draw them. So we got three examples. We got two where the, the circles are disjointed, they're separate. We got uh, two circles where they touch at one point here. And then we have two circles that are overlapping. We want to see what the common tangents there are. Now, um, with this first example, A, remember that tangent only touches the circle at one point. 
So I can draw this this way, and then I can draw another one that's coming out this way. So I would have two external tangents, and then what are called internal tangents would be the ones that kind of come in in between the two circles. So this would kind of look like me going this way, and then going this way. Right. So that would create four common tangents. If we look at B here, and I go again from the outside, um, that'll create an external tangent going on this side, and I have another external tangent going this way. Now, since they're touching at this one point right here, um, I'm going to have a tangent line that goes right through that. Okay, so this one's going to have three common tangents. Right, now, if we look at this, uh, where the two circles overlap, I'm only going to get two tangents on this one because I'll have this external tangent that goes this way and the other external tangent that goes this way. I can't put any internal tangents because they have an overlap. So this one's going to have two common tangents. So next we're going to talk about the tangent line to a circle theorem. And so what that says is that if we have a circle and I have this point here, Q is, is the center of the circle, and I draw a line that is tangent to the circle Q, and I draw that point of tangency, we'll call that point P, and we'll call this line M. And so if I draw a radius from the center to that point of tangency, um, these two lines intersect at a 90 degree angle. So the tangent line to the circle theorem says that if I draw the radius to the point of tangency, that the radius and the tangent line are perpendicular. All right, so now we've got a question um, using the tangent line to the circle theorem, and this says it's segment ST tangent to circle P. All right, so um, notice that if I draw this, here's this SP, TP is a radius, and then this ST right here would be the line that we want to see if it's tangent or not to the circle. Uh, since it makes a triangle, we want to see if this is a right triangle. So what I would do, um, I want to ask, uh, is 35 squared plus 12 squared, does that equal 37 squared? All right, so 35 squared is 1225 plus 144. And again, where it's asking, does that equal 37 squared? All right, so if I add 1225 and 144, I do get 1369, so that is equal, so that is equal, so then I would say yes, ST, segment ST is tangent to circle P. All right, now looking at this one, it says in the diagram, point B is a point of tangency, find the radius of R of circle C. Okay, now, so on this one, we're told that this line right here is tangent. So I know that I could use Pythagorean theorem to solve for R. Um, the only thing is right here, here's my 90 degrees. For this side, it's going to be 50 plus R. Okay, so using Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to say 80 squared plus R squared has to equal to 50 plus R squared. Because okay, this is the entire length from this point all the way to C. So I'd have to add these two and I want to square that sum. So this becomes 6400 plus R squared. Now to expand this out, I have 50 plus R times 50 plus R. Right, so 50 times 50 is going to give me um, 2500. So I'm, I'm using the, the FOIL method here where we distribute all my terms. So 50 times 50 would be 2,500. 50 times R would be plus 50R. And then R plus 50 would be another 50R. And then R, time, R times R would be R squared. Okay, so combining all my like terms, I get 6,400 plus R squared is equal to 2,500 plus 100R plus R squared. Okay. Now, um, 
I'm going to subtract this r right here. So minus or r squared. Those cancel. So I'm left with 6400 is equal to 2500 plus 100 r. So I would subtract my 2500 from both sides. Uh, this would be 3,900 is equal to 100R. Divide by 100, I get that my radius is equal to 39. Next, we're going to introduce what's called the external tangent congruence theorem. And this is if I have two tangent segments, or if I have tangent segments from a common external point, then they're congruent. So if I have this circle, we'll call it circle P, and I draw a line that's tangent here, or a segment that's tangent, and I have another segment that's tangent this way. From the same common external point, and I call this S, and this one's R, and then I call this one T. Okay. If these two are tangent and they share that same ex um, external point, then that tells you that segment SR is congruent to segment ST. Uh, this next problem says that segment RS and segment RT are tangent to circle C. We want to find the value of X. Okay, so since they both have this common endpoint R, uh, that tells us that the 3x plus 4 is equal to 28. So to solve for x, we set up our equation like this, and we subtract 4 from both sides. So we get 3x is equal to 24. So x, we divide by 3, is going to equal to 24 over 3. Right? This doesn't reduce, so this would be my answer.